the Sports Vote Campaign Podcast. Invest in sports. Hello again. This is the Sports Vote Campaign update for Sunday, August 15th, 2021. So the first IPO in a number of years is going to be the new NHL Kraken team, NHL Kraken, uh, Seattle Kraken team. You can find the details of that in the uh, on the notice board. Um, we're going to be releasing the date of the exact date and time of the release uh, in that post on the forums in the notice board. So I want to say again, I said this uh, pretty much from the beginning, that the penalty for uh, killing funding, germ funding, uh, disease funding, pandemic funding would be 100% of GDP. I said this at the very early uh, stages of the crisis early last year that we would uh, we'd be paying an entire year's GDP. So just when the final analysis is done, I'm putting this on the record again, you're going to see that all the money that has been borrowed or printed or whatever is going to be about equal to the GDP of the year, uh, we'll call it 2019, the year before. So the message here, uh, greed kills, uh, short-sightedness kills, and um, you know these mistakes, humanity seems to never quite learn. Um, as far as the real estate market goes, it's about to pop. Uh, it's getting real close. You're going to have a very interesting situation going on here because of the run out of the, um, the moratorium, the renter's moratorium. So that's going to cause uh, a bunch of renters to be thrown onto the street who then have a, um, a, an eviction on their record, which will make it very hard for them to get another place to live. And then that stock of housing is going to get dumped onto the market because a lot of these landlords are also behind on their mortgages. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be a, it's going to be a real, um, real problem for both the renters and the real estate market. So the NFT uh, market continues to rise. Uh, as I've pointed out in the notice board, we're going to suspend this program for a little bit because um, the, the, the way that you buy in and the costs of the gas fees and such are too high. It is very difficult to get money in and get money out of the system. It's still that way. Uh, so we're going to leave it alone, even though the uh, July 2021 numbers were up uh, to almost $364 million from $60 million in June. That's almost a six times uh, increase in, in volume and about 50% increase in value. It's the highest ever. Interesting that that was during the first month that we ran a test. Um, there is some interest in this program, but I'm just not confident in it yet because it's still very difficult uh, to get money in and money out, and the fees are too high. And this is all a function of it being the Wild West and a, and a market that is still needs uh, some controls. Uh, last week, we crossed seven years with the learning market, seven years of operation from the from the learning side of the ASM market, seven years. Um, again, th these notes are may, may be repeats in this because it's straight out of my notes. Um, the eviction extension was 60 days. So really, this just continued to kick the can down the road, and it's going to eventually have to stop, and uh, the market is going to have to adjust. But it looks like another 60 days before that fully comes uh, into play. So Robinhood had a, a huge spike. This whole meme stock thing, which drives the prices all over the place, is pretty crazy. Uh, regulators are looking at this uh, phenomenon pretty closely because it is causing all kinds of crazy activities in the market. Um, it looks like um, unknown to us, um, Bernie has decided to publicize an offshore sports book. And it looks like a, a very uh, marginal sports book at that. Uh, combined with Fans Frenzy, and I just want to be clear here that uh, – we don't have anything to do with either one of these. We weren't told about it. We are in no aspect of this. Do we have any connection to or even uh, input on or conversation about either of these involvements? And the fans frenzy thing is from a uh, little over a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago. We still aren't clear on this. So as a result, um, Alper's drawing up a termination letter. Um, that doesn't mean that Bernie loses the stake he already has in the business, but we're going to be publicly distancing ourselves from him because we cannot have these kinds of tie-ups. Um, this is a good versus evil thing. I'm not backing off on that. Gambling is evil. It's not good for anybody. Uh, it's a vice. It causes a lot of problems. 
and you got to pick a side. So I guess it looks like Bernie wants to go that way because that's the way of the world and that's the way they're trying to push things. And frankly, we're the only ones standing in the in the gap here. Um, DraftKings, there's nobody else out there. DraftKings lost 76 cents a share. I called that. Uh, it would be about 50% greater loss than the uh, projected loss. Um, the average number was about 50 cents a share loss. If you look on Yahoo, it came in at 76 so um, they took in just under $300 million, and they're making a big um, – that's the top-line revenue. That's not earnings. That's that's not how that works. They spent $325 million, so they actually lost more than a dollar for every dollar they took in. Uh, I don't know how you make a business out of that, but um, – that's uh, And that's with the best fudging they could come up with. You can be sure there's going to be restatements coming because of the SPAC stuff. Uh, this is all just a bunch of hype and nonsense and even getting involved in NFTs and all that. It's all a distraction. Um, you know, it's they've now got all kinds of legal issues on their hands, including an IRS audit and the SEC on top of them. And I wouldn't be surprised if justice is next because that's usually how it works when there's this much commotion. Uh, I'm going to say that the SEC, it is the SEC's fault that we're delayed. Um, we've had our no action pending for more than five years. They surreptitiously asked us to pull that down. Uh, I didn't know why to file this lawsuit. I'm sorry, that's not going to work in front of a jury if you're stupid enough to put this case in front of a jury. And what you've really done is you've damaged our ability to do what we set out to do, and you've lied about it. Basically, the number one lie is uh, not acting on the no action and then asking me to pull mention of it down without actually dealing with it and then filing this bogus lawsuit, basically looking for some reason to file suit because that's what you guys apparently do, and you try to find a weak hand and then hurt them. So what you've really done is hurt our shareholders, and I'm going to make damn sure everybody knows it. Um so DraftKings basically is spending more and more money on marketing, so it's not difficult to get people to uh, sign up when you're giving away free money. So, you know, how many people will say yes to free money? Um, that's why the costs keep going higher. But remember, sports bookies are, are sports bookers are notoriously fickle, and they go where the, they're bonus jumpers. They go where the best bonus is, so there's no retention. Uh, you're going to find that in the numbers, that the, they jump around all over the place, so um, you know, if you're going to make a business out of just giving money away and there's no profit model, of course you can do that as long as you continue to get it from somewhere like the stock markets. You know, you hype the stock and then you take money out of the stock markets and you use it supposedly as a customer acquisition cost, but you've yet to show that you can generate a profit on, on any customers. So in the 2000, I would say 18 to 19 period, maybe late 2017, one of the things that Jeff Hazlett of Hero Club um, and C-Suite Network would say over and over again is that you need to pick a side, pick a side, pick a side. Um, you know, I, I, that rang true to me when he said those things, but I didn't really understand where, what he was, where he was going with this. It's now become a lot clearer to me what this is a far bigger message than it appeared at the time. Uh, we made this decision a long time ago as far as picking a side. In fact, ASM would never have existed in the first place if it wasn't for what I saw firsthand in the late 1990s, early 2000s in the sports booking business from the inside. Um, it is an evil, corrupt business that is not good for anybody but the operators. And even the operators, for the most part, are uh, not, it's not about profitability. It's about cash flow and it's about dirty deals. Okay, so that's the that's the real bottom line there. Um, okay, so DraftKings IRS excise tax audit. I'm still waiting for somebody to deal with the fact there's a 60 wor 60 year old anti corruption law called the Wire Act that is still very much in force. Restated earlier this year. Um, either fix this legal system and enforce the laws or burn it to the ground because it's bullshit. It's fucking bullshit. Okay, that the 30 year old PASPA is not the end of the story by a long shot. Every single sports book that is operating right now in this country is breaking the Wire Act. There's no way around it. You cannot transmit bets, the money, information about bets. None of that can cross state lines, period. Full stop. So unless you have a sports book that is having cash brought in a bag to the counter, unless that's what's happening, the Wire Act is being broken. So don't tell me about the fucking laws if you're not going to deal with that, because that's the reality of it. Okay? And, the, and as I said, the bookie business is all about dirty actions. It's about money laundering. It's about fixing games. It's all corruption, corruption, corruption. 
So, so again, uh, back to a statement I made several years ago about uh, ASM being a safer cigarette. Alper actually hated this comparison, but I think it's making more sense now. I expect that this faction is going to continue to drive and drive and drive. I mean, we shouldn't be selling cigarettes in the year 2021, and we still are because, you know, it's clear that it's a health hazard, a very se- severe health hazard. I have personal family and friends that have, have either gotten sick and or died from it, but yet it's still on the market. It's the same thing with uh, sports investing versus sports gambling. We're going to have to beat them on the just by taking their customers away with a better product. It's clear that they don't care about the law and they're going to continue to pretend like the ones that hurt them don't exist. And uh, crafty lawyers are going to write lies and spin jobs to continue to justify what they're doing rather than dealing with the fact that it's, A, first of all, it's not profitable, and B, it's extremely harmful. So, um, you know, they're going to write the laws according to whatever the predetermined outcome is they're looking for. That's very clear. We've seen that in, in actions we've been involved in and things that we've examined. So... That's how it works. It's not about the truth. It's about just figuring out what you want to do and then make a reason for it. Um, all right. So DraftKings is going through all these uh, hype story every couple days. Doesn't seem to be having too big of an effect on the price of the stock. This is all distractions. Um, you know, it's all to distract away from the trouble that's brewing. They certainly have plenty of that. I do think you're going to see consolidation in this market. It's already starting to happen. And there are lawsuits connected to even some of these recent announcements. I mean, they're, the, um, they're not following proper procedure, apparently, because now the lawyers are jumping on DraftKings M&A deals. So, so, yeah, good luck with that. I hope it all burns to the ground like it should. Um, if you want honest players in the market, uh, lawmakers, regulators, and, and judges, then you, you can't allow this kind of flagrant violation because it's just going to multiply. I mean, certainly they taught you that in your expensive law schools, right? So anyway, um, tradition is a hard thing to break. Gambling is a tradition. I get it. I get it. It's an uphill battle. We're the underdog. I get it. Uh, that's fine. You know, it, it always starts like this. But, um, you know, we can do better than this. We knew a long time ago gambling was bad. That's the reason for the Wire Act. That's the reason for PASPA and all these things. It's amazing how fast people forget. Is crypto infrastructure, uh, apparently there's some crypto elements to the uh, infrastructure bill, which looks like this time it's going to go through. Not sure what that means for us. I'm waiting to see, uh, you know, the full text of the bill and then see what parts of it, if any, we can have anything to do with. I like the concept of digital soldiers. I'm just going to mention that with nothing in particular in mind right now, but digital soldiers, I like that. Um, Mr. Pillowhead and uh, his, and friends are being uh, going to have to deal with uh, the lawsuits from Dominion lying about their business and basically wrecking it. Um, the judge involved in this case is the same one involved in our SEC case, which I find pretty amazing. I'm not saying that means anything or doesn't mean anything. It's just an interesting coincidence because this is a very, very big issue going on with this uh, public uh, defamation. Hint, hint. Some folks out there need to hear this public defamation suit that's going to proceed and uh, against this bunch of idiots. Um, $600 million crypto hack, apparently half of it being returned back so far. Don't know what to make of that other than almost a billion. I mean, these stories are every other day. So, you know, again, my foray into this world with testing out the NFTs is not very impressive. Um, it needs, it really needs some work. All right. So, uh, yeah, DraftKings lost more than a dollar for every, it, it loses between one and two dollars depending on which quarter you're looking at, between $1 and $2 for every dollar it takes in. That's that's a fine business operation. I'll say this again, that ASM will make money from the first day, the very first day that it is put together. Uh, when we put together the real fundraise and put it on the third instance of the engine, it will be a profitable enterprise from that day forward, and it will become the largest this is – I'm not backing away from this because I believe this 100%. I can see the numbers. I can see where the numbers will go. If we find or create that first fundraise, that's the only job left, publicize that, the business will make a dollar. It will start making money from the first day, and it will never stop, and it will become the largest enterprise in the history of the world, period. Okay. Um, 
Let's see, Amazon's ambition. Ah, yeah, so every once in a while, the CEO of DraftKings comes out and throws out a buzzword uh, basically to uh, grab press attention. Uh, you know, it was uh, bringing Michael, pay, basically paying off Michael Jordan, the most problematic ga- <laughs> gambler. Even Bernie said this. So the most problematic sports gambler on the face of the earth is your recruit. <laughs> you pay him off uh, with some stock, which you probably already sold, uh, to use his name and say, we want to build a company like Michael Jordan. I don't think people really know what that means exactly. Maybe the shoes, Nike, but he's not, you know, he's got a deal with Nike. He's not Nike. Uh, and now it's, uh, we're going to build a company like Amazon. Oh, sure you are. We'll see. Actually, it's more like Marlboro, I would say. But you know, the cigarette companies make a profit, and they they actually make a profit. Where I I have no idea what that means. If you think that the whole world is clamoring for an ecosystem around gambling, you're an idiot. Gambling has been around a very long time. People have been gambling offshore since Ace and I were down there. And what ecosystem has that created? You think all of a sudden you're going to find something new here that they didn't already see? Um, there's no Amazon here. I mean, there, you know, there's no there, the world is not, and the United States is not clamoring for new ways to lose their money. That's just stupid. Uh, maybe you, you know, be, putting making a more similar, uh, more accurate comparison would be that you want to become like, um, you know, the drug cartels. Maybe that's your ambition. Um, we're the only solution and the only stopgap to disaster standing in the way of of this foolishness. Um, there is nobody else. Nobody's left. It's just us. Yes, we're the underdog, you know, and if you support what we're doing, you're supporting the underdog, but it's a better future. We have a lot better future um, that can be created around sports investing than what's going to come out of expanding gambling at any in any fashion. So the Dominion case, um, Dominion versus Pillowhead and Morons, that uh, case is going to have a lot of good uh, citations that we can use in all, all of our open cases and any future cases. Because as I said before, uh, things are changing and they're going to continue to change. And, um, you know, some of the uh, folks that have been aggressively trying to destroy supposedly their own interest in ASM, um, it's pretty hypocritical to see you guys trading on the website. Yes, I know. Okay. Yes, I can see what you're doing. I can see every time you log in. I can see everything you do. That's, that's pretty amazing. I don't know how you can wake up and look yourself in the face and, uh, and do that. That's, that's, that's a textbook definition of hypocrite. Okay, so uh, Field of Dreams, that publicity stunt put together by uh, Major League Baseball. You know, interesting, we made, we made a Field of Dreams, you know, build it and they will come um, in the uh, sports shares, the physical ones that I made up last year, or actually in 2019 we did that. Um, that was an interesting stunt. I just want to say that, you know, that's, again, our proposition, build it and they will come. In our case, that kind of a future, okay, that that good, healthy future is what we're offering as a contrast to the vice, destructive vice of and corruption of gambling. So that's our field of dreams. And all that stands between us and that successful outcome is to find or create a single uh, fundraise, a single fundraise, sports or esports, and publicize it. And we know how to do that. We've shown that over and again, all the way back to Costa Rica and most recently in Hollywood. So Um, If you believe in this work, if you want to help support what we're doing, please look in the show notes. That's just, you know, if you go into your podcast reader and scroll down, you can see the show notes. There's resources in there that are always updated, and there's also some instructions if you want to help us financially support this mission, which, you know, the underdog against the the well-funded machine, that's what you're doing. Please see that in the show notes, Um, and we appreciate, of course, any help that you would provide. Thank you very much for your time, and I will speak with you again in two weeks. Bye now.